Well, the whole Bible story sort of begins with this image of the Creator God reaching down to earth, taking part of that earth and breathing life into it and creating humanity. And that same Creator God meets us in a garden and begins to live and dwell among us. We have this image of God that tabernacles among a nomadic people, a people of Exodus that are coming out of an empire trying to go into a promised land. But we so quickly turn from that God that is camping out with us and we begin to build our own towers. So you've got the story of the Tower of Babel where humanity tries to make a name for themselves, the scriptures say. We try to bridge the earth with the heavens, but we find ourselves growing further and further from the God who is among us and with us in the garden. And that story continues for thousands of years and, and now we find ourselves, I think, in a time where we've suffocated the earth with concrete and towers. And there are a lot of us now who are beginning to say maybe we need to bust through the shell of that society and allow a new earth to be born. There's been a lot of talk about altar calls, but I think a lot of us are talking about a new altar call. That's an altering of our life to think about new ways of living. And when the scriptures say we need a renewing of our minds to not conform to the pattern that is destroying our world, that's kind of what we're talking about. So we'll be looking at some real ways that we've seen conversions happen in our way of life and alterations that bring us maybe just a little bit closer to what God had in mind. So we'll be going across the river to spend some time with the Camden community there where they begin to sort of care for creation around them in a neighborhood that's haunted with environmental racism where chemicals and waste have been dumped on a poor inner city community. We'll think together about what it can mean to take the waste of our world and create life, to make ugly things beautiful again. We'll also be talking about what it means to be made in the image of a creator, to use our own hands to create with imagination and hope, uh, things that can can bring us to life. So we'll see some glimpses of the Yes And theater camps and the Runaway Circus and other things that we've, we've done in our neighborhoods to bring imaginations together to collaborate and conspire. Well, we'll have a few glimpses of this little group of superheroes we call the U.S. Antiheroes. So also spend some time with our friends that have converted their buses that run off diesel to run on used veggie oil. And our buddy Aaron Weiss will walk us through the bus of his band, Me Without You, and show us how that works. And there's something interesting that John, the writer of Revelation, says. He says, but I did not see a temple there because the people were God's temple. God was dwelling among us again, just like in the garden. And just as Jesus says about the temple, there will be no stone left on another. And as Jesus is dying, the veil of the temple is split open. It's setting all of those sacred things free in creation again. So a part of what we find ourselves doing is sort of breaking through the shell of the old society to allow a new one to be born. As the scriptures say, there's a broad way that leads to destruction and a narrow way that leads to life. And so a lot of us, I think, are just trying to figure out how to find that narrow way when the scriptures say that we're not to conform to the pattern of this world that is destroying us, but we're to have a renewing of our minds that allows us not to conform to that. That's what we're talking about when we speak about creation. So I love how the scriptures are filled with another image. The image of a people who begin to beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, who transform those tools of death into things that bring life. So in the culture in which we're living, we're bombarded with all this noise of marketing and advertising and, and, and we have computers that begin to look like people and people begin to look like computers. But computers cannot love and there's no life in them. I think a part of what we have to do before we can create a new society is bust through those things that have sucked the life out of us.